the New Hampshire uh, Attorney General's office saying a robocall from last month, which appeared to be an AI-generated voice clone of President Biden urging people not to vote in the state's primary election, has been traced to a Texas company called Life Corporation. New Hampshire's AG saying charges could be brought, resulting in prison time for thousands of dollars in fines. Joining us right now to talk about this and Meta's new labeling of AI content and so much more is Hanny Frid, a UC Berkeley professor of computer science. Good morning to you. You know, we Good are morning. now, we, we, are, we are within striking zone of uh, the election here. And I'm so curious just what kinds of things like this you think are going to take place and what needs to happen to prevent this kind of thing. Yeah, well, let's talk about what's happening right now. So here in the U.S., we have the national election. Over the last few months, over the last year, we've seen the rise of generative AI interfering with our elections, from the robocalls in New Hampshire, trying to discourage people from voting, to the images and the audio and the video that are floating around social media trying to harm candidates, but also around the world. Some 2 billion people will vote this year in some 70 elections, and we are seeing the same type of interference around the world. So these are serious issues around our democracy. I'm not disagreeing with that, and I appreciate you laying that out. I think the bigger question is, what do you actually do about it? Who do you Good. hold responsible? Do you hold the tech companies responsible? What kind of responsibility do they have in all of this? How do you yeah. hold uh, the bad actors accountable? It, by the way, several thousand dollars in fines, which could happen. <laughs> that doesn't seem like enough. I mean, what are we talking uh about here? I agree. Look, everybody's got responsibility. So obviously the bad actors who are committing the, these crimes or trying to interfere with elections have to be held accountable. And I'm glad to see the New Hampshire attorney general going after them, whatever the consequences are. Absolutely 100 percent the tech companies, those who are creating the content, those who are not putting the guardrails on the content, those who are allowing the content to spread. So that's Twitter, that's YouTube, that's Facebook, that's TikTok. And then, of course, we as the public, because at the end of the day, this content is showing up online, but we're the knuckleheads who are clicking on that and sharing and amplifying, and that's what's also causing a storm. So I think there's blame up and down the ladder that we all have to take responsibility from, from the C-suite all the way down to the individuals. But assuming that the individual never likes to take responsibility for themselves, which we've seen before, um, how, how do you actually do this? We've talked about regulating social media forever. Do you actually regulate the AI uh, programs that can, can write these things? Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. you, so, you wouldn't hold Microsoft responsible for things that I write on Microsoft Word. Um, yeah, it's not the right analogy, of course, because a generative AI system, I go to a portal, I upload somebody's voice, I click a box saying I have permission to use that person's voice, and then I get them to say things they didn't. And that's not the same thing as me typing into Word. But let's put that aside for a second. And let's talk about how do you regulate this, because it is difficult. We are talking about political speech, and we have to give a very wide berth here because lots of speech, including lies, should be protected. And so I think if the government is going to get involved in the biggest— you say. Including oh, let, lies. Let's go if, back. Let's hold on. Let's, let's, as they say, as the kids now say, let's double-click on that. What, what do you mean? But first of all, let's not say that. But— um, it is OK to lie, but it is not OK to tell people that they can't vote or where they can vote or try to interfere with an election. There's a really big difference. There are limits to those lies. It's, 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 you're allowed to say certain things, but there are still guardrails. So let's talk about how the government could do this without running afoul of the First Amendment. We could simply say we need for all AI generated content to be rigorously and robustly watermarked and fingerprint so people know what they are consuming it. Think about nutrition labels at a grocery store. You can go to the grocery store and buy all kinds of junk food, but you need to know that you're putting bad things into your into your body. Same thing can be for our minds. Let's force the companies to label the content as AI generated or not, and then the consumer can make decisions on whether they want to believe it or not. But here's the thing I don't understand, Professor, and this is goes to sort of how, how you're going to police lies. So if I said that you robbed a store last night, and we'll assume that's a lie. Should that be regulated? If I said you graduated from a college that you didn't graduate from, yeah. is, that, is that a regulated lie? Or is the lie only that I'm lying about, you know, some kind of uh, effectively election interference, that somehow election interference is a different type of lie? Yeah. So understand, I'm not talking about regulating lies. I'm talking about labeling content as deceptive or not. And that is really different than what's inside of the content. 
So all I'm saying is that if you are going to generate a robocall with Joe Biden's voice, it has to be clear to the receiver that this is not Joe Biden's voice. If you're going to create a video and post it online of Joe Biden or Donald Trump saying and doing something they didn't say, it simply has to be labeled. We're not talking about regulating the speech within limits, of course. We all recognize there are limits to well, what happens defamation. if I want to generate a video of you online? Do I do I have I have rights to do that? Um, again, I am not saying what you have a right to do or not to do. I'm saying if you do that, the consumer of that content should simply be aware that it is not me speaking that it is something that is AI generated. And then downstream will deal whether it's defamatory or not and whether it's illegal or not. Labeling is a gift. It doesn't put value on the content. It doesn't restrict the speech. It simply says, this is what this is. And it's a very low bar, by the way. We are not asking for a lot here.